A hurricane hit a large sailing ship in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and the ship was tossed and turned. Everyone on board was busy trying to save the drowning vessel. Eventually, the ship sank. One young sailor and his friends hung on to a broken lifeboat. They were too deep in the Atlantic Ocean for any rescue parties to reach them in time. For days, they were lost at sea. Sharks were after their weak flesh. Some of the sailors died of exhaustion or injuries. Others were so thirsty, they drank seawater and started to hallucinate, swimming out into the open ocean towards a certain death. So, they kept dying, one after the next, until our young sailor was the last survivor. And now, he was all alone on that broken lifeboat. Exposed to the sun, the wind, and the sea, he was without any protection. But he hung in there. Several hours after his last companion died, he was spotted and rescued. Why did he survive? Because of his thirst for knowledge, among other reasons. Later, I will share with you how and what it can teach us about adapting to change at work. Decades later, when I was a young sailor, he would become my captain, my mentor, and my good friend. He He encouraged me to follow the call of adventure and wisdom. So I learned languages, including Arabic, lived among tribes, and I explored the jungles of Asia, the deserts of Arabia, and the beauty of Africa. I looked for knowledge wherever I could possibly find it. And today, I'm an international strategy and marketing consultant. I fix companies or help organizations and individuals prepare for the future. I also teach MBA students and top executives. Facing change, learning, unlearning, and relearning is a good part of what I do. Now, the captain and I, we were both voracious readers. The small library in a ship's cabin was quite impressive. On the ocean, we exchanged books. He used to say, reading does for the mind what experience does for the soul. His advice. His advice was to be busy with either reading or being out there, gathering experiences. Back then, without access to the internet, a library at sea was very precious. Now, if you are old enough, can you remember what life was like before the internet? A lot has changed since then, right? So I meet students and executives that literally fear that they can't keep up with change. They worry about their jobs, which makes sense. They hope very often for a better life in faraway countries, but they forget that they also live in a time of location-independent opportunities. It often feels confusing. I myself feel the shock of the new chasing me through the professional forests like a hungry wolf, right? But as they say in German, die Angst macht den Wolf größer als er ist. Fear makes the wolf bigger than he actually really is. Change attaches itself to your deepest fears, right? Change matters because it's everywhere, no matter where you go. It manifests itself in unstoppable globalization and automation. Opportunities are moving from analog to digital, from human to artificial intelligence, from dysfunctional bureaucracies to blockchain technology. According to a McKinsey report, by the year 2030, up to 800 million people worldwide could be replaced by automation alone. No generation before us has ever seen this dramatic level of change, and it is the slowest right now it's ever going to be. We fear a future that lacks jobs and opportunities. The question now is, how do you prepare? What do you do? The concept I'm about to share with you saved at least in part the captain's life. With the internet, we enjoy learning opportunities 
well beyond books and libraries. The world has moved on. There was never a better time to improve yourself than today, than right now. But knowledge has grown more rapidly than what our brains are able to handle. This makes it very difficult to prepare for an uncertain future. When I started my career, I was told that only specialization in one field can lead to a successful career. Today, it is becoming clear that both generalists and specialists can and should come together. In this new world, we will change jobs many times. Depending on what you do, your skills might even have to transcend industries. And for the determined professional to remain relevant, you most likely will have to become more than just a specialist. You must become an agile and creative hyper-specialist and generalist. And I tell you, this is not a contradiction. Being a hyper-specialist makes you one of only few people that can do what you do. When you remain agile and creative, you are able to adapt flexibly to sudden changes in the marketplace. A practical example is bioinformatics. That's an interdisciplinary field of science that combines computer science, biology, mathematics, and information engineering. And here, both hyperspecialists and generalists come together. Now, before I continue, ask yourself this. What are you a specialist at right now? Take a moment to picture it for just a moment. As a specialist, here's how you can prepare for constant change. Some people talk about T-shaped knowledge and that your knowledge should be both wide enough to be able to work with other specialists and very deep in just one specialized field. I would argue that if you're truly ambitious today, you should aim for a triangular or combined T and V-shape instead. Your knowledge must be both wide and deep, and deepest in your chosen field of specialization. In a nutshell, you must be both a specialist and a generalist and everything in between. You become a sponge for knowledge, soaking up all that know-how and wisdom that not only relates to your specialization, but that also relates to a wider field. You fill the knowledge gaps within that triangular shape. Today, mankind swims in information, but we're still thirsty for knowledge and for wisdom. And to turn what you've learned into knowledge, you must gain experience. And yes, this means a lot of work, which is why you should be passionate about what you do. If you must be a slave, then be a slave to your passion and wrap your career around it. Now, the concept is not really new. During the Renaissance, the printing press, and today the internet have accelerated the distribution of knowledge. Back then, just like today, Renaissance man or polymath were experts in different subjects. They were therefore able to remix their wide knowledge into groundbreaking ideas and concepts and inventions precisely because they are more than just a specialist in one field. In some way, quite like bioinformaticians who are not only biologists, Leonardo da Vinci was not only a painter, but he was also a sculptor, an architect. He was a philosopher, he was an engineer, he knew a lot, he was a man of wide knowledge. He remixed his knowledge and invented the precursor of the diving suit, the tank, and the robot. And not only did he know a lot, he knew how to combine his knowledge into outstanding pieces of art and science. Right? These polymaths with triangular shaped knowledge have existed throughout history and everywhere. Think of the first century AD polymath, an inventor of the seismograph, Zhang Heng, from China. Or Ibn Khaldun, the groundbreaking Arab historian and philosopher. Or Edda Countess of Lovelace, the lady who envisioned computer programming already in the 1800s. These people all knew what the education system and industrialization made us forget. That we need to have a sense of self need to know who we are in order to remain relevant and creative in a world of constant change. 
Now, how did our young sailor survive? It was part luck and it was part know-how. You see, before this catastrophe, he didn't study just enough to get his diploma. Instead, he kept learning in his free time. Now, how do you choose what to learn when you have unlimited options? He chose to learn whatever he felt like, as long as it was related to his seafaring specialization. You see, this young sailor read books about marine biology, navigation, leadership, and many other topics that were well beyond his job description as a simple sailor. And that tri -sha triangular shaped approach to both wide and deep knowledge is what kept him alive. You see, he read that you must not drink seawater, but chew on seaweed instead, sucking it dry for every single drop of sweet water. This small but important detail is most probably what saved his life. From there, it led him to eventually thrive into a father, a husband, a captain, and a leader. A good education should not be about shoving facts and figures down your throat. That's not the point. Instead, it should arm you with the skills and the tools to solve problems and to explore the unknown. This was the real characteristic of a Renaissance man or woman. And today, you can finally choose to become a digital Renaissance woman or man. Nobody can stop you any longer. Everything you need is now freely available on the internet. This was not possible until very, very recently. But you must act on seizing on one of history's greatest opportunities to refine and to redefine yourselves. Today, you can become anyone you want to be. So let me ask you, what did you always want to be able to do? Quality education used to be very hard to access and it was a privilege reserved for the rich and the most gifted in society. With the internet, knowledge has finally been democratized, right? We live now in one of the greatest times in the history of education. Literally all excuses have been removed. And yet I still encounter ambitious professionals and very intelligent students that feel intimidated by learning about subjects that they should know about. Today, you can finally commit to learn what you previously thought impossible. Because anything you thought you can't learn has been broken down and explained for you already. And often it is now explained in interactive, fun and playful ways. Mindless memorization is a thing of the past. Studying has become a lot easier. However, to harness this immense power, you must Learn how to distinguish bad from good information, since anyone can post anything online, and to keep yourself focused on one topic, the way textbooks used to do it. Remember that our internet is designed to distract you. It is not designed to help you to learn and to grow. Other than that, it helps to remember a concept from India and from Pakistan, which is called Jugar. This means patching things together, with few resources in order to find practical, real-world solutions. Your constraints will most likely not be the availability of knowledge. It's out there. The constraint will be time. Become an expert in one field. Explore what other sources of knowledge outside your domain could be useful to you. And then you patch your know-how together to make it work. You see, these books in the library of the captain that he cherished so much, they were much more than just entertainment. These books represented the very building blocks of life, hope, and courage for both desperate and for good times. He passed this courage on to others and thus helped me to prepare for my own adventures. Now, Now that my friend is gone forever, I, I miss him, you know. His words from all these years ago, they, they still ring in my ears. 
He encouraged me to never give up and to keep working on becoming a better version of myself, no matter what. Especially, especially when there is no hope. In our noisy modern world full of distractions and instant gratification, these lessons might stream very strange today, but they remain important. Uzbur Tenel, be patient and you'll get what you want. Right? <laughs> our bodies, they become old very quickly, but our minds, they should always remain young, fresh and open. You see, as an old man in his retirement, the captain went back to university. He was hungry to learn even more. His thirst for knowledge never stopped. You see, the day you stop learning is the day you decided to start to die, no matter how old you are. With the internet, the limit to all you can be is no longer just in your passport or the reputation of your school, or your family, or the color of your skin. It doesn't even have to be your bad school grades any longer. Today, the limit to all you can be is in your heart and between your ears. I'm not saying that no other barriers exist. Of course they exist. We all know that. But the one place you can always start to change is your own mind. Define who and what you want to be. Consider the triangular-shaped approach to both wide and deep knowledge. Get wired up to good education, be that online or otherwise, and then start becoming that person that you are destined to become. No generation before you had the online opportunities you are enjoying today. What's out there is amazing. I wish I would have had that, but I didn't. As a digital renaissance man or woman, you are mankind's hope in this new world of constant uncertainty. If you want to give back to mankind, the best you can give is not always your money but your knowledge and your wisdom. And the more you know and understand, the more you can actually give. Today you have a choice. If you do nothing, you let the world change you. <laughs> or you choose to change yourselves. Because today you actually can. This is the beginning of anything you want. Now go and make that change happen. Thank you. <laughs>